stop. Please read this. Okay, so I assume you went and watched that four minutes or so of the uh, beginning of his video. And um, he, he said he did that video because people kept telling him, and, and rightly so, that weather mods can only happen in the ionosphere. And um, I'm going to tell you right now, there's only two patents with embodiments for weather effect, weather manipulation, and this is not one of them. Um, he needs to do this because he wants to prove or show that the ionosphere is not where the mods happen, but I'm telling you right now, that is exactly where they happen. In both embodiments of both of the other patents. Um, this is just a mirror to reflect radio waves. That's the only thing, that's all that this is for. Um, but we'll go over it. So he says he's been pouring over this, uh, apparently studying it. I don't know. Um, and then he goes to the patent and he opens this up. And then he does the usual, you know, oh, you can read all this. And surprise, surprise, he actually starts to read to us. Now, right off the bat, he is reading the abstract, which is just a summary of what the invention is. Uh, and he thinks it's part of figure one. It's what he thinks it's describing. And it's not. Figure one has its own description down in the lower pages, which I, I've said before, I'm telling you now, they're there. They're not missing. Um, but anybody who knows technical writing or any kind of science knows that, you know, it's going to say, where's figure one? Okay, here's an explanation of figure one. The abstract, right, is just a summary of the text, of the, of the entire document. So we start from there. This invention relates to generation of an artificial ionospheric mirror, AIM, or a plasma layer in the atmosphere. Stop right there, he says. He repeats the text. A plasma layer in the atmosphere. Then he adds, there is no plasma layer in the atmosphere. It has to be created. Now, I'm assuming that you can read and you understand what the context of a whole sentence means because it's only one sentence right and I'm gonna let you read it and you tell me if this doesn't tell you <laughs> that's what this invention does it creates it generates a plasma layer you don't need anything else there's nothing else needed you know don't add batteries okay that's what this thing does but I don't know how he just blows right over it okay now you read it Take your time. Okay, before we go on, I'm going to put up a diagram with all the annotations of everything that you see. This is what the inventor said, that that's what these are. Okay, this is not made up. And uh, I know he said he couldn't find the pages, but they're there. If you go to the last three pages, 17, 18, and 19, the inventor explains this whole thing. I mean, there's no mysteries. So this is what he should have seen. And maybe he wouldn't have given us this explanation. Oh, and by the way, it's a lot easier to read all this if you put it on full screen. Uh, it'll really stand out for you. So he uh, continues to explain um, that, that certain to create the plasma layer, certain particles have to be put in the atmosphere, and that they aid in the frequency manipulation to cause a layer of pl plasma. Uh, and he says, and that's the oh, and the squiggly line, right? He highlights it with his cute little pink mouse pointer and proclaims that this is the wavy harp cloud that we all see. And it's called the harp cloud now, that's what they call it. And because it forms a wave. And he tells us that the sprays are able to create a tiltable mirror and to reflect down to a house or to another dish or that reflects the off the cloud itself and back down to the planes that are flying beneath. Now as I was telling you that you were obviously looking at this diagram and it had nothing to do with what he said. Absolutely nothing. And I'll give you the, the whole real explanation. In fact, if you look below, you're going to see it. I'm going to print it out for you. Um, so anyway, he reads on. The aim is 
used, like the ionosphere, to reflect RF energy over great distances. A tiltable aim is created by a heater antenna controlled in phase and frequency. Then he stops. Then he proceeds to point to the radar dish and says, The heater antenna is this ground-based system, the dish, the harboring that we're seeing. <laughs> then he points to the heater array. They're launched from harp or from other facility, another facility, and he points up to the mirror and it comes back down to the ground-based system that and he says, oh, and it comes back down to the ground-based system that re relays it on. So we're seeing these relay systems pop up from time to time. And then he goes into the whole next rat hoax. So anyway, so he reads on. The heater antenna phase shift scans a beam to paint a plasma layer. And then he says, in other words, which means in his own twisted words, it scans out a beam, and we see the beams in what HARP researchers call beam attacks which he says isn't really a tax, it's part of the system. Oh, geez. And the last line, thank God, frequency is changed to refocus at continually higher altitudes to tilt the plasma layer. And somehow he concludes that it, it, that explains the concentric rings inside of each other that the, I guess the cult is seeing these now when they waste all those hours watching for rings on Intellicast, which I might add, they're glad you are. And, you know, by doing so, you're helping to cover up the real conspiracy of what Harp is actually doing. Great job, Dutch cult. You should be very proud. If I were you, I would ask the military for a salary. Because, you know, they're paying sock puppets like 50 grand a year to do what you're doing for free. All right, let's see what this diagram really means. As described by the inventor on the pages your cult leader couldn't find. He's kind of inept, I think, with that. There's only a few more clicks down. Uh, on page 17 of the patent, second column over, uh, it's under the heading, Detailed Description of the Preferred Embodiments. And again, so that it's easy for you to understand, because that's really what I'm all about here. I want you to get this. I want you to understand this. I took the liberty of putting the annotations on the page that you're looking, because it doesn't come like that, um, based on the what he numbered as each individual item and uh, his description, which again, you'll be able to read. It's down below. Figure 1 illustrates the creation and use of an artificial ionospheric mirror. AIM. For tracking aircraft and reflecting radio waves. A heater antenna, 1, radiates power causing avalanche ionization or breakdown, releasing free electrons in the atmosphere to generate the AIM, 2. The heater antenna, 1, is an array which can be used to focus energy at varying altitudes and elevations to tilt the AIM, 2, using phase and frequency control. The AIM, 2, simulates the ionosphere, 3, which is also used to detect over-the-horizon targets, 5. In addition, the AIM, 2, can reflect radio signals transmitted from a transmitter, 6, to a receiver, 7, over long distances. Okay, I'm just going to go over this just real quick with you. The heater array down in the lower left creates the artificial, the ionospheric mirror, which is number 2. Um, and with that mirror, that mirror can reflect radio waves. And how does it do that? Well, it, they've created a plasma layer. Plasma is very excited atoms. And they have so much energy that it's almost like a wall, okay, to, to radio waves. And with that, it, with that generation, they literally have invented a thing that can bounce radio waves off of. And it simulates the ionosphere, if you look where the number three is. Um, okay, so since it's just like, a, just like a mirror, okay, it can reflect radio waves over the horizon, which has always been a problem for the military. Now, you'll see uh, from number four, it bounces off of the ionosphere, number three, and then back down to the furthest plane, right? That's how they used to do over the horizon um, uh, reconnaissance. But see, when you're going through the, through the ionosphere, it degrades the, um, the signal. And, you know, they always had a problem with that. They had to, to fix it with electronically, which is not that easy. So with this mirror, though, they don't have to do that. It's a much clearer signal, much easier to do. Um, and, of course, you know, the radio transceiver and, and receiver is, the, is 6 and 7. Um, now, the military radar, which is uh, underneath the, it's number 4, that, is, you, the, that uses the mirror to look over the horizon to monitor planes, to see if, you know, to monitor the enemy. 
um, instead of using the ionosphere, which I just said degraded. And that's it. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Isn't that pretty easy? Okay, so that begs the question, where did he come up with all this stuff, right? He made it up. I mean, why did he make it up? Well, he made it up to prove that the rings can be seen, you know, without having to go through the ionosphere, which you can't see the rings anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, they, they are, there is no way the military is going to let you monitor their baby. That'd be like having a sonar and you can tell where all their submarines are. You think they're going to let you do that? For the last five months? There's no way. There's no way. And he has his own motives. I mean, I can pretty much guess what they are, but... And if you're not suspicious of them, then maybe you should be. Okay, so here's my challenge to the members of the cult. And yeah, I'm calling you guys a cult. Does it make you mad? Well, it should make you mad. Because you know what? That's exactly how you're acting. I just showed you that the guy lies. He doesn't even know what the hell he's talking about. And you know what? You're still going to follow him, aren't you? That's what cults do, okay? When they see the truth, they ignore it. That's what cults do. Look up cult. Look it up in an encyclopedia. And then look in the mirror. Here's my challenge. Prove me wrong. Have your leader prove me wrong. He's going to ignore me because that's what he does. But you can't prove me wrong, can you? I rest my case, Your Honor.